Welcome to our lesson about building a transitional constraint. Let's start with a new assembly and now we'll bring in components. Open the base, click open, left click to place, right click and done. Now let's bring in the cam, select it, open, left click to place it about here, right click and done. And let's apply constraints between these two components. I'll select this axis and this one. Apply and cancel out of the tool. OK, constraint tool again. Let's select this face and this face. Apply and cancel. Let's bring in the follower now. Select it. Open. Left click to place it. Right click and done. And constraint command. Let's select this face and this face. Apply. Next, I'll use a tangent constraint. It'll be between this face and this face. Apply. Right click on the cam, visibility. We'll just need to hide it for a sec to test the follower. OK, let's show it. Now, in order for the mechanism to work, I need this face here to follow along this face. If I use the tangent constraint between these two faces, this face here and this face here, it's not going to work properly. Let's try it out. As you see, it doesn't really work. OK, let's delete that tangent constraint and activate the constraint command again. Let's go to the transitional tab. We'll select this face and this face, and let's apply and cancel out of the tool. Let's test our mechanism now. And as you can see, the mechanism now works. Let's use the drive constraint option now. Let's apply an angle constraint. Use the directed angle option. We'll select the Y axis and the Y axis on the cam also. Let's apply and cancel out of the tool. OK, let's right click on the angle constraint in the tree and select Drive Constraint. Let's change the end angle position to 360 degrees and press play. And here's our mechanism. This concludes our first lesson about using transitional constraints.